Meteorologist Aaron Tuttle here. For years, I've been recommending Ferguson Roof Systems to homeowners across Oklahoma. So when Mother Nature struck my house, it was an easy call to make. There's no one I would trust more than Ferguson Roof Systems for my home's roof. Since 1977, Ferguson has led the industry with an a Better Business Bureau rating and lifetime warranties. Plus, they'll even deal with the insurance companies so you don't have to. So when Mother Nature strikes, make your first call to Ferguson Roof Systems. Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle. It has been a minute and uh, I get a lot of things reset up again here. I get some of the stuff to work again. Uh, so thanks for joining me. If you missed the lunchtime live at noon for a little quick update we had today, I kind of gave you a heads up that we do have some big changes coming our way as winter weather is back finally. So we're going to actually get some winter back in Oklahoma. It's going to feel like it. So January is going to come in a lot different than the way December kind of went out. <laughs> So it's been pretty mild. We had some a lot of dry days. We did have some good rain there in kind of in the middle, which is nice. Uh, and things will get a little on the chilly side coming up here. Already, really tonight, you'll start to feel it. And then on into tomorrow as uh, cold air continues to build on in here. Uh, so I'm getting them live on YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, um, Twitter, and Instagram. It looks like it's kind of a little um, sketch on Instagram on my computer. So if it is on yours, I'll have to look into that, see what's going on. Um, otherwise, I'm also on TikTok. So, all right, should have had plenty of time, uh, plenty of time for you guys to get acclimated and get settled. So that's good. Always takes a few minutes to get all the notifications to go out and get everybody on here. All right, so all that stuff is done. Let me load up the fun maps and we'll get down to business, shall we? Okay, so the weather service is already being highlighted. The fact that we'll be seeing some cold weather coming up soon. Uh, so they're already getting excited themselves, as you know, meteorologists typically do. There's a big change coming our way. So let's take a look at the details on that. We'll look at the European. We'll kind of focus on that here for today and show you where the action is. This is a look at the jet stream pattern. So basically where you see the bright colors uh, here in orange and yellow and red, this is your upper level disturbance. This is your lift in the atmosphere that swings through. So if you'll notice that we have a little gravy train moving through the central part of the country into the northeast over the next couple of days. So I put this in motion. Uh, we're kind of what we call a northwest to southeastern flow. Uh, and then as we get into Friday, we'll start to get really sharpening of that flow. In other words, a ridge starts to build out here to the west. We'll start to develop a trough out here to the east. And what that does is for the jet stream, it really starts to take it more out of Canada and then dips it down across the central plains and into the southeast. And that allows all that cold air that uh, builds in this region of the continent to come and spill into the United States. So that's kind of the pattern that is setting up here over the next few days for the week. And then we should have this little guy buckle underneath the ridge, sneak in underneath and come in from the weekend. Now this is a big change in the outlook here in the European data. In other words, it has a very strong upper level low uh, zipping on in, which it did not have before. It, it did not have this type of a look um, the last time around. It's more of an open wave, kind of just a subtle energy. So this is a big change. And I mentioned at noontime today that the models are struggling what to do this week weekend as far as the exact track, how much energy, how much lift, all that kind of stuff. Plus, we have to deal with the fact how cold is it going to be. But the point is, we do have at least uh, an upper level disturbance coming our way. And then we also have that pattern change for colder air. Now, if you look at that um, and we transform that into the form of precipitation, uh, we zip through this with time. Let's take a look here. Uh, we do have a little bit of high that, that spills in. This is the, the leading edge right here. Let me use this. Uh, well, I can go back here to my arrow. Uh, this little line here of isobars that comes in, nudges in, this is on Thursday evening. So there's your good Arctic front, and it builds all the way back up here into Canada. So there's our leading edge. So that's going to start to feel things cooling down for Friday. All right, and that kind of keeps building in uh, for the uh, central part of the country and the northeast as we head into Saturday. We are going to try to start to moderate. Depends on how strong that return flow is in the European with that upper level low. And what it can do is it can moderate that Arctic air if it's shallow enough and, and not as dense here. Uh, and we start to warm things up a little bit for Saturday. So here's Saturday night and the Sunday. And look what it does. It, it cranks the, the winter storm with most of the... Uh, 
action here up to Nebraska, even the Dakotas, uh, Missouri, uh, there's this uh, central part of Kansas, and then even back here in northwest Oklahoma, and then it keeps it warm in the warm sector here across central and eastern Oklahoma. Probably some wraparound uh, as this thing pulls away. It will put a little bit of a wintry, light wintry mix behind it as we head into Sunday night. That's the way this latest model data looks, but I'm telling you right now, this has been all over the place. So just, just because it shows it as this exact solution does not mean this way it's going to stay. Odds are it's going to change again. And then tomorrow morning in the next run uh, is the way things have gone. But anyway, kind of give you an idea. That is what's on the, on the table for us. We're kind of focused on for the uh, latter part of our weekend as things become more clear over the next couple of days. Of course, we'll detail more of those specifics. But let's take a look at the temperature anomaly. In other words, uh, we're going to see temperatures above or below uh, normal. Now, you do see all that purple on the map. Those are temperatures below normal. As much as minus 20 to minus 30 degrees below normal up there in Canada. So yes, that is very cold. And you can see how that spills off to the east around central Canada, Winnipeg, on down to the northern plains. And you do see, again, if the European is correct, we, this is what I'm looking like right now, just to kind of give you an idea. I could We could pick all the models to show you. We don't have all that kind of time. So uh, just for the to tell you the story, I'm just picking this one. But uh, you can see a warm-up trend, uh, plus 9 degrees, plus 15 above normal. See, so that, that, that upper-level low can really help to warm things up here. Uh, and keep the north, uh, uh, the cold air just to our north and east. But regardless, as we go into the weekend, uh, and if we do heat up here, it'll be temporary because we'll see this colder air start to spill back in on the back side of it. But the point is, is look now as this cold air kind of infiltrates, uh, again, this part of the country, even all the way down to Florida. So this is a big change. That's a, that's a big chunk of cold air. And that pattern with the jet stream pattern, remember how it kind of went from northwest to southeast? That's what you get in that pattern. We get the glancing blows off and on, and then most of the cold air scoots by just to our east and then settles here into the deep south, southeast, and, of course, the northeast as well. Um, so Jody has told me that the TikTok was echoing really bad. Hmm. I don't know what's going on over there. Let me see here. Let me see if that worked any. All right, but thanks for uh, letting us know. So uh, let's see. All right, so let me go back. Let's see what is it doing next. Okay, um, temperature. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. All right, it's one thing to say, you know, temperatures are below normal, but what is it actually going to be? Well, if you look up here where you see the purple, those are actual temperatures below freezing all the way up in the northern uh, parts of the U.S. and the Canada. All right, so we get a little taste here. You can see how the dividing line kind of east to west in the early stages through this week. So we're not, although we will get cool, we're not going to get bitterly cold until this big kit and caboodle comes down. So let's take a look at that. So here we go. There's Thursday and Friday morning. There's our taste. Now, this model does rebound us into the 40s. Just to let you know that the, some of the other models have kept us into the 30s on Friday uh, with that Arctic air entrenched in place. Depends if we have any cloud cover, if we can mix that out. If we can't, yeah, you can easily see upper 30s on Friday. So in other words, Friday can be a, a questionable day. It's going to be chilly, that's for sure, regardless. All right, now we go on to Saturday. Same thing. We do have kind of a, a rebound effect here. Most of the country uh, to the north of us is going to be quite cold. And of course, into Canada, and then we'll go into Sunday. Again, if we warm things up with that upper level low, that's great. And then we'll get the cold air in behind it. If that low doesn't come in that strong, we will not rebound that much, and we'll stay on the colder side. And we'll have a little bit more of an opportunity for precipitation that's frozen. Speaking of which, if we do take a look kind of at, at uh, for the model outputs for snowfall, uh, you can see this is going to be through Monday. All right, so this is that Sunday Monday time frame. So you can see all the snow up here across Kansas and Nebraska and up across the uh, Missouri. And I remember this is early, so this is all preliminary estimates, and none of these are going to verify to the T. Uh, it just kind of gives us a trend that we'll watch for. But that's the European data, all right? So here's the Canadian. Now, if you notice, Canadian is much further south. It's got the snow all the way down here to southern Oklahoma. It's got a big, heavy batch of snow from Tulsa into uh, southern Missouri, up around a foot in this particular model output, but snow higher to the north. And then the American model also puts it back up here to the north into Kansas and Nebraska, etc. The German model, the Icon model, puts it back down the south. So you've got two to the north, two to the south. Um, where is it going to lie? Eh, a little early to tell, but it's in our ball. It's in our vicinity. All right. So obviously, it's going to have our attention. If we look at the ice accumulation, same kind of idea. The European model, because of that warm nose, keeps it up here to our north. All right, and that's amounts that are significant, uh, definitely for travel problems. Right. It doesn't take much. Just a, you know, 
a few hundreds really is all it takes to cause some uh, slippery roadways, but you may get a couple of tents, uh, two tents, maybe three tents in some of this area. Um, some of the model they have close to half an inch of ice over southern Missouri. All right, now the the uh, Canadian says, ah, hold your horses. We're going to put it all the way down here in the southern half of Oklahoma and to far northern Texas. And then the, and that's some heavier amounts up around 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Now, we'll tell you this. Typically, the Canadian model is an early bird um, at estimating a higher amount of ice. It typically overdoes it, though, by a little bit, but it is usually the first that has an idea of what's really going to happen and the placement. So don't discredit that. All right, let's go to the American model. American model says, ah, I'm going to put you way over here. Still the same thing, a uh, few tenths of an inch of ice accumulation. So there you go. So that's, um, let, me do, let me break it down for you like this. One, two, three. <laughs> three different solutions out there as far as where this ice is going to be. And we'll see. It's uh, So, yeah, if you're asking me, well, nobody knows. You're right. Nobody does know. Not even the models know. But we do know that the signal is there, and we're going to have to watch it. Now, if you look at the snowfall output uh, on the European for the ensembles, these are, uh, let me get off of that one, go back to this one. Uh, these are 50 different runs, all right? So if it's got a blank area uh, west to east along the line, all right, this means it's got a little bit of snow here, a little bit of snow there. This one is blank, so uh, this one's got a little bit of snow. This run here is blank. So most of them have some snow, and they do range anywhere from a dusting to the highest. I see about five inches of snow. This is for Oklahoma City, by the, by the way. Uh, timing on this looks down. When it starts here on this end, you look down at the bottom for the time, for the date. So it has a little bit of flurry activity here around the 3rd of January. That's probably that for that first front that comes in for Thursday night and Friday, right? Uh, but otherwise, it has a better signal up here right around the 6th. And then we have another little signal around here around the 8th. Here's another little signal around here for the 10th. So it's got a few little areas here where we have to watch with um, some snowfall maybe falling here across uh, central Oklahoma. All right, so temperatures like we talked about. Uh, we'll just look, pull up the, you know what, let me do, we've seen the European. Let me do the icon. The icon was the coldest uh, in the data that we saw yesterday and this morning. Let me see if it's backed off of its ridiculous numbers. Because it has some pretty cold numbers. Uh, let's go to Saturday. So it milds us out a little bit for Saturday, back into the 40s, kind of like what the European did. And it does bring in some wraparound cold air for Sunday. And there's your Monday morning, 16 degrees. The earlier data had 8 degrees. And then for the afternoon, into the mid-20s. So this is typical, the, the models will kind of go off and on as far as how cold it's going to be, but just giving you a heads up, the potential is there to have some pretty nasty stuff. All right, so what about New Year's Eve? What are you going to be doing, right? Well, I hope you're bundling up because it's going to be chilly out there. So here's your midnight uh, for Monday night, or excuse me, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So we'll split the difference right at midnight. And we're looking at basically 30s across the majority of the state. There'll be some low 40s down here across the southeast. Uh, let me look at the wind field at this point in time. Earlier data had it pretty light from the north, uh, I think about five miles per hour, and it still does. So we have light north winds. That won't be too much of a factor for you, so that's good. Uh, cloud cover, uh, just a few clouds up here across the panhandle into uh, southwestern Kansas. Otherwise, looks like mostly clear skies out there uh, for our viewing pleasure. But uh, otherwise, it will be a typical chilly New Year's Eve, but dry here in Oklahoma. All right, now, what's going to happen the extended outlook? Well, seasonable, you know, for daytime highs coming up now for the upper 40s, low 50s. So say goodbye to those 60s that we've had over spoiled with for several days of December. Overnight lows back into the at below freezing level. And then, again, with that front that comes in, depending on the timing and everything else that comes in, uh, we get cold. Do we rebound on Sunday or do we not? Regardless, we're going to get cold on Sunday night and then Monday. And we'll see because we've had some readings in here uh, and some of the data that shows we may never get above freezing again. It just kind of depends on the exact trajectory of those Arctic highs. If we get the glancing blow or if we get more of that direct shot. And overnight lows will be very cold and expect these numbers can be quite a bit colder as well. Just kind of give you an idea, this is a model blend, so this is going to be conservative. So this kind of tells you this is a conservative extended outlook. Let's go to maybe war aggressive uh, and let me just see what the models have done here so let's go to the European for example 
Over at Lowe's, it's gotten to the teens and 20s all the way here. It does have us barely above freezing. And then eventually on the 12th and 13th, it does get us a few warm days. But that's a pretty good cold stretch. It's a good solid week of temperatures um, close to the freezing mark. If you look at the American model, let's take a look at that one, see what it's going to do. Let's clear that one off. Yeah, I'll do this right here. Uh, let's see here. Eh, it's all over the place, up and down. So not nearly as consistent as a European in the extended, but it's still quite chilly. Um, that's about all I wanted to show you with that one. Um, that kind of gives us the tail. All right, so again, there's a, the conservative blend here. Uh, we are going to get cold, and then we'll see what happens. So I will update you, obviously, off and on throughout the week to see what's going to happen here for the weekend. That is the big question as to far as how much... Uh, we get as far as cold air is concerned and then where that winter storm sets up. It can easily shift around. It can come south a little bit and go west and go north. Sure, all that's on the table at this point, but the signal is there, so obviously it's something to talk about. And uh, you can go anywhere from just a little bit of a travel nuisance on some roadways to, yeah, you can get some power outages in those areas they do get, you know, more than a quarter of an inch of ice, uh, especially for the bit of a wind component. And uh, we'll, of course, fine tune where that may be. That might not even be in Oklahoma. That might be, say, in, you know, southern Kansas. Could be in Arkansas. Could be in Missouri. Could be in North Texas, you know. So we'll see. It's close. Uh, but anyway, so that was it. So that's my uh, update here for you for tonight. I uh, look for updates off and on throughout the week. If you haven't had a chance, you can read my blog. It's at AaronTotalWeather.com. Uh, get my weather app. Uh, it's called AT's Weather to Go. It is free on Apple and Google Play. Just search for my name, Aaron Tuttle, or just AT's Weather, and it should pop, pop up. You'll probably see some other apps on there, too. Uh, those will be... Um, uh, those will be people that type... that The developers that use my name... <laughs> <laughs> in their search key terms because if you search for me they think maybe that you'll get theirs too uh, tell you what man the older i get the more i realize humans are turds <laughs> they're such turds and there's cons and they will they will they will just take advantage of any human that they can and they will ride the coattails of other people and they will piggyback off of other people's success so if you see anything like that and you type in my name and it's not my stuff, ignore it. So they're just trying to make a buck off of me. Anyway, so that is it for you. I will update you again sometimes on our Facebook Lives for lunch and also sometimes here in the evening. Normally I can hit around 9.30. Tonight was late because busy day to day and I had to get caught up and uh, had to do a lot of updates on the computer so it put me back. But otherwise I'll usually be on time uh, in the future. So if you guys want to get to bed early, no problem. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the stars, by the way, on Facebook. All your comments, questions, concerns, all that stuff, and I'll get some more details. We can answer more questions off and on this week as well as we have a little bit more time. But uh, I want to wrap this up here for you so we all can get to bed. All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk again soon. Take care.